Hello, a Merry Christmas, <laughs> even though I'm about a week late, and, um, well, a Happy New Year, at least, yes, tomorrow is uh, New Year's Eve, so this is a, this was supposed to be a Christmas special, I guess it is kind of still Christmassy, isn't it, because, um, uh, what am I doing, because, um, let's switch sound off as well, uh, because Christmas officially ends, at the end of the 12 days after Christmas, which is uh, January the 6th for Epiphany. So, so we're still within Christmas. Um, so, what I really want to do this uh, episode is, I've forgotten even what number episode we're on, but is to um, re-kind of structure, refactor how we're generating the terrain. Because at the moment, I'm just randomly creating um, stone and... I'm not creating any of this ruby at all, but obviously in this new version I am. Hello, panda. Um, and also, I've got my trees looking pretty good. I've got like some extra branchy bits, leafy branchy bits coming off, and I've made them a lot taller, which I think looks really nice. Um, something else I've just noticed is I've clearly, I've used the same Perlin noise, um, what should we say, seed, because you can see that our our forests, our little woods, are gathering over the highest places, which is kind of cool, but isn't deliberate. <laughs> um, I don't deliberately want that necessarily to happen, so that's something we can investigate. But the main thing is we've got to refactor our terrain generation so that um, we are generating these stone um, stone blocks and other blocks like ruby, not um, randomly but with purlin noise, and we want to sort out our trees. Oh yes, in this new version, notice that the trees are distributed um, more randomly, um, and I've done that with some uh, trigonometric functions, so like sine I've added. So basically where they were in a row, I've said add a sine wave to that row of trees, so I'm trying to describe the sine wave now with I'm kind of like wiggling up and down um, and that kind of where the trees are going to be placed follow that uh, mathematical function, which means they're, they're spaced out in a more uh, unpredictable way. So they don't look like a grid. Um, we could go and compare that. Let's um, press shift Q to come out of full screen mode. So if you like just staring at my face, I apologize. My face went away for a little while. Sorry about that. Yeah, I'm back again though. Happy New Year. Um, let's go and find the yes, the uh, the work in progress. Um, I'll just make sure. Was it in that I've got full screen off? I think it was in the inventory system that I placed full screen shenanigans. Um, yes. Wow, I remembered a thing. So here we go. Line 11, window full screen equals false. And what I'll also do, um, let's go and find, whoa, go and find my prepared code. There it is. Um, so I want to go into the same module. Where's the inventory system? Oh, I have to open it. Right, file, open. Inventory system. Am, am I in the right place? I think I am. Meshcraft current. Let's just go. Okay. <laughs> Let's just make sure I'm in that. Yeah, Python. No, no, ro not roboting. Um, Asina dev pi Minecraft Python Minecraft Meshcraft. Here I am. Current. And so it wants to be this one. Good. Um, by the way, all that robot stuff. Why haven't I made a video? Because I've been um, busy with several other projects, such as making a robot work with Python, which is exciting. Oh, I should have had him on screen moving around. Maybe I'll pause this and he'll suddenly appear, <laughs> stop moving. Um, also voice command, I did a bit of machine learning and I've done virtual reality with A-Frame. Um, so I'll be making some tutorials with, for many of those things, um, as well as carrying on with this Minecraft with Python. Um, so, uh, oh yes, I was just wanting to say, okay, full screen, let's just set that capital F to false, so that you can see my face, 
when we run the code. So what we were wanting to do, however, was run the tutorial code. So to do that, I have to go to the main module, then run the code. And let's have a look at the trees and things like that to compare with what we were just looking at. There we go. So yes, we haven't got the branchy things. And you'll notice that they're all in a grid. And what we want to do is make that line of trees kind of wiggly in terms of where they're being placed. And we can do that using a sine wave. Um, and also, right, these stone blocks, they look exactly the same as the other version. However, if I ran this again, these stones would be in different places, which is ultimately not what we want. We want to be able to put in a, a seed for, our, for each world that we make. And then we get exactly the same thing again and again. OK, so let's go and sort that. Um, OK, this is going to be a short video, I promise. No longer than 30 minutes. Um, and I don't have a plan because I thought if I don't just sit down and just make a video, then I, I it's going to be 2023 <laughs> and I won't have made a Christmas edition. So we need to make everything icy and snowy and Christmassy as well. Um, so that means I haven't prepared what I'm doing, but I've got a vague memory of what to do. Um, so I'm in mesh terrain. That's where we make. That's where we make the terrain. And I'm looking at my pre prepared code, and I want to look in. Yes, generate block. Okay. Um, I'm looking for I'm looking for no you know what I want to look for is I was generating a random block in the tutorial code the current code that that you've got in the link uh, in the description of previous videos so I'm going down to generate block. Here we are, generate block. So when we're making the terrain, this function gets called and then it generates or adds um, new vertices to the, the mesh, extending the model. Um, here we go. So line 148 says, if we're laying terrain right now, i.e. not just building a, a block, um, then, if this random number is bigger than 0 0.86, then make sure the block type is set to stone. Otherwise, if we're really high, set it to snow. So we don't want to do that inside of generating a block. This should just get, yes, a block type, which by default we've set to grass um, by writing grass up here. So if we don't set a, if we don't pass in a block type argument, then Python will assume the default grass. So we can take this out. Um, and I'll just, because I'm scared, <laughs> I'm going to comment it out. Um, so now we won't have any stone. Let's go and run that. So I go back to my main module, which is where we've got to run things from. Go to run, have some coffee. I think it was coffee, it wasn't tea. Hmm. And I said unto the land, stone be gone, and lo, there's no stone. Um, good. So now, what we want to do more thoughtfully, back in the mesh terrain module, is organize when we're going to play some stone, when we're using the generate terrain function. So this, just as a reminder for myself and for you guys, if you've been watching this series, it was a long time ago when we created this function. This is basically, we're kind of describing a grid and then these nested for loops, so 4K in range and 4J in range, so it's a nested loop or a loop inside of a loop. And we're then deciding the height of each, um, each cube, each block within that grid by using some Perlin noise here and using the getHeight function. 
and then when we're happy with the position and the height then we call the generate block function and look we pass in grass so actually what we want to do in here is decide whether placing stone etc or grass smiley face good and then we don't want to say block type equals grass we just want to pass in the block type so here I'm going to say block type equals grass at the moment we'll assume that it is grass oh and that should be a string there we go oh <laughs> I've been doing a lot of web development, i.e. JavaScript. <laughs> so you may some, see some random uh, semicolons. Oh, and I've done comment style for JavaScript. <laughs> there we go. Ah, I'm in hash. I'm doing Python, doing Python. OK, um, right. And I wanted to say, assume, assume we're laying grass. Let's just assume that. So 11 minutes in, we're doing OK. Um, right, prepare code. Let's go to the prepare code to help us out. Let's see how I prepared this. Many, probably over a month ago, and then just never made the video. Um, here we are, generate terrain. Decide whether to plant a tree, rock, etc. OK, so we're in that nested loop, and... I'm saying b-type, that must mean block type, equals grass, so assume we're placing grass. Oh, <laughs> this is very strange. My past self thinks very much like my present self. Um, if this plant stone, and then we're passing in the current x and z position of that block, that must mean in this function that we've never seen before, so I've written a new function called plant stone, we must be using some Perlin noise instead of randomness to decide where to put or whether to put some stone. So, and we're saying if we're just saying if this function, which might seem strange to you, but what that means is this function will return true or false. So at the end of this function, we're going to have a look at this function, it will return true or false. And so if we're saying the Perlin noise says, yeah, we're high enough to make some stone, not high enough in sense of terrain, but high enough in sense of uh, the numbers, then we'll put stone. Um, else, we won't. <laughs> we're just going to um, uh, defer to our default grass. Um, OK, so if this plant stone, so let's just copy, let's just copy this code. Should I do some typing? Let's try and type it out. So I'm saying, if this dot plant stone, and then I need to say, well, where am I? So I'm here, let's just pass in those, and we don't need the Y. The Y is to do with the height of the terrain. And we just need to know, not the height, because this stone block is just going to be whatever height is decided separately by Y up here. So Y is taken care of up there. So I can forget about y. I just want the position on the x-axis, which is across, and the z-axis, which is back and forward, or depth, in terms of the camera. So if that returns true, then, so really I'm saying it's true, and you know what? I'll put it like that. I'll put it explicitly so we can see what's going on. Then um, we can, we'll can we change the block type. We're going to say now that equals stone. Very nice. And save that. Now there's going to be a problem because plant stone is a function that doesn't exist yet. And we can see because we were using the this keyword, it actually belongs to the mesh terrain class, which means we must make it up here somewhere. Let's go to the prepare code, save on time. Um, let's generate. So I'm just going to scroll up. I'm still in the mesh terrain function. Scrolling up, generate block, generate walls. These feel like old friends, these functions that we've written together. Update, do mining, classic. Uh, what else have we got? Plant tree. Oh, that's why we've called this function plant stone on the pattern of plant tree. 
Also, it's fun to imagine planting uh, stones. Here we go, plant stone. So, uh, where have I put that, by the way? I've put it underneath setup subset, so I'll put it in the same place when we come to put this in our code. So, the first thing, because it's a member function, it belongs to a class, the first keyword will be self, or I always use this, because I'm used to writing in JavaScript and C sharp and things like that. So we'll just write this. And then we're taking in an X, a Y, and a Z. That's weird. Why did I pass in the Y? I don't remember doing that. Do I ever use the Y? Oh, I do. Look, I use the Y. Oh, no, no, this is that Y. Uh, so I don't use the Y. Interesting. Hmm. Hmm. Um, anyway, so we want to use Perlin and perhaps coordinates to determine how much stone to lay. Let's try linear. No, I don't try linear interpolation. I've done something else. So I'm saying y. So y in this case just means like a probability. So a height. The closer to one, the more absolutely we're going to, or 100 in my case, because I must multiply it by 100 or something like that. The closer to 100%, the more likely we're going to have uh, our tree. And then we're just using some noise, some Perlin noise. So we've done this before in terms of the actual terrain. So we pass in the x, divide that by frequency, pass in the z, divide that by the frequency, and then we multiply that result by the, the amplitude. Um, and I've got some commented out Perlin noise here. So Perlin noise can have octaves, a seed, a frequency, and an amplitude. And those numbers, if you play around with them, they change like the height. If you're on a physical terrain, it changes the height and the variation and things like that. So it's really good fun to play around with this. And when we make more biomes, we'll play around with those things to flatten out things, to make a tundra and, and all kinds of things. Um, anyway, so, so now, once we've written this function, we need to then go and give ourselves these variables. Because notice again, it's not just noise and tree frequency. It's this dot tree frequency. So again, we've created all of these up in the body or the constructor of our class. So first, let's just write this function. Let's just comment, uh, sorry, copy plant stone, but we don't need the Y. So um, we'll have a look at that situation. I'm a bit confused. So here we are. We've just passed in. So I'm back in my code or the code that you can see, we're in mesh terrain, and I'm in the function generate terrain. And so, yeah, we've just passed in x and z. Um, the k and j, remember, are just the, I forgot what they're called, the iterators, the variable that keeps track of how far in this grid, in terms of rows and columns, we are for placing a block. Anyway, we don't need to remember any of that. We're going to right to the top here, it's around line 60, wasn't it, in my other code? And so there we go. I'll make it actually just above setup um, subsets. So I'm writing the plant stone function close to the plant tree function. So I'll put it here. Um, I copied it, but I might write it plant uh, stone, <laughs> this keyword, or if you're doing Python properly, you write self. Um, then I want to write um, underscore x underscore z. Again, I just use underscores to remind me that it's not another variable. It's just a, a parameter now of this function um, derived from an argument that we pass in. There we go. So we've got plant stone. And at the end of it, we want to return true or false. So at the moment, I just assume false. So don't plant a stone. Um, then we got we've got to go and uh, get some noise. <laughs> we want to say y equals all of this stuff. So the the x and the z that we've just passed in divided by frequency multiplied by our amplitude, which will make sense when we um, assign values to those.
There we go. Um, Good. So now we need to go and make this tree noise. So if I just scroll up to the top of our class here, here we go. So when we initialize or the constructor function for our mesh terrain, we're creating all these member properties, member variables. So down here, let's do this. So our new like planting terrain stuff. I don't like the word stuff. Features. Uh, terrain feature variables. And we want this tree noise equals. So presumably we're going to create some, or going to create a new Perlin noise object. Let's go and have a look now in the prepare code of exactly how I've done that above. So I'm in the initializing function, and here we are. I've done it in the same place. <laughs> oh my god, I called them terrain features. Oh my god. Sorry, I shouldn't be surprised that my past self is very similar to me right now. And by past self, again, it's only like last month or something. But the fact that I wrote features, I don't know, it's just these little things that I think, I thought I was making that up at, in the moment, spontaneously. Anyway, psychologically, I'm finding this very fascinating. So this tree noise equals. So we create a new Perlin noise object. Notice this is not the same. This one is different. So maybe I've got a new import at the top. From Perlin, sorry, from Perlin, import Perlin. Something strange is happening. Anyway, I'll investigate this in the next video when I have more time, because I've only got seven minutes and something to finish this off. Um, okay, so let's just, oh yeah, and we've got the tree frequency and the tree amplitude here as well. Just grab those. <laughs> yeah, so we have got Perlin, so hopefully this Perlin noise function I, I, I've got referenced. Well, you know what, let's just try and run it. If there's a problem, then we'll solve it then. So, uh, so octave, that's kind of like the resolution. So if you, if you have large octaves, it's going to push our distribution of stones further apart. The seed, we are using the same as our main terrain, I believe, um, which will probably be in the Perlin, I'll investigate that, as I said, next time. I won't look now. Our frequency, again, the lower the number, kind of the spikier your terrain will be, or the, the spikier the distribution will be. And amplitude is basically just like how high the numbers will go. So, um, so that refers to, if we go down to our new plant stone function, because now we're saying, okay, use those tr frequencies and amplitudes to go and get a number here. So this is pro this is why I could call it probability. Uh, probability. There we go. And instead of probability, I'll call it probs. And we'll say if probs is greater than some number, I think I said 64 in the example, then return true. That means it's likely enough to have some stone. Let's have some stone. And that means we exit this function. We're gone. So we never get down to here where it says return false. If it is, if our probability is 64 or less, then it will just pass through here and it will, and it will return false. Bim, bam, boom. Um, let's squeeze all that together aesthetically. So we should be able to plant stone in the same way. Let's go to main and run. Um, so what we're looking for is maybe a bug if we can't get our Perlin noise. No, mesh terrain um, object has no attribute plant stone. This plant stone. 
I probably wrote it with an underscore when I wrote the function. Let's have a look. Yeah, plant stone underscore, which is Pythonic. Writing it using a uh, camel humping, they call it, when you start the, the new word with a capital letter. It's more JavaScripty or C++ y. Okay, there we go. Plant tree. Oh, look, I do pass in Y. No, that's plant tree. Oh, and I have called that one. Okay, we're going to have to sort this out. So, we're going to have to sort this out. So, plant tree should use uh, an underscore. That should use an underscore and lowercase. So, we must be consistent. Now I've got to go and change plant tree to use the underscore as well. There we go. Right, let's try and run again. Again, I don't know if I'm going to have a problem with the uh, reference to Erwin noise. Kind of running? No. Uh, looks like a problem with. I'm not even sure actually. Integers or slices, not string. I was thinking that I had tried to change block type to just a word or something. I don't know what I've done. In generate block, this subsets model. Generate block. I think, have I just left the, the name block type? Oh, I need to go back to mesh terrain. So return true. I need to be in generate block. Oh, sorry, generate terrain. Um, yeah, I've just written block type there. Um, in my prepare code, I call it just B type. So if I say block type equals B type, sorry, block type equals B type, then I'm not trying to assign um, this string to, what was it saying in the error? Some kind of like, uh, to a, a model uh, list or array. But basically, it, I, it was thinking I was passing in a, an argument to a, a different parameter, um, I think. So B type equals that, and then block type equals B type. That should sort that out. Okay, try and run again. And we've got grass. <laughs> oh, and stone. That looks like the zip. By the way, I, I know this stone. I know this this uh, block type. That's zero 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 on the grid. So something's happening weirdly at zero zero. Um, oh, I've only got one minute to sort out the uh, trees, and I I haven't got any block. I haven't got any stone. I haven't got any block. I've got blocks. It was working, but no stone. Um, so, one thing is, I could have written my request for stone incorrectly. I have just said B type of stone. We've seen it there. If plant stone is true, probably, I'm guessing, I didn't put in a, a the correct kind of number. Plant stone, this, X and Z. Let's just go and have a look at the prepare code. Um, oh, it did say greater than 
Oh, no, that's for creating Ruby. <laughs> Whoops. Greater than 34, then create stone. Oh, so that's group. And interestingly, I'm actually calling generate block inside of here. Oh, so this actually makes a Ruby on top of the graph. Interesting. Anyway, um, does that solve our problem just to save 32? Well, if our amplitude is 128, then the maximum height we can get to is 64, because we can go to, from minus 64 to 64, as far as I understand the way that this Perlin noise works, which might not be the, you know, for all Perlin noise, or for that matter, <laughs> my Perlin noise. Oh my god. I know what I'm talking about. We've got stone. Okay, so this stone, every this is not exciting, but every time we generate this world, or whatever world you do with a particular seed, as long as you're using that seed for your stone, I use 2022, um, which we're just about in, panda, <laughs> lands on a head, um, you will get exactly the same distribution of stone. Right. I will give ourselves some more time. I think it's very important that we get our trees looking taller and not so grid-like. So let's do that. Let's do that. Another thing we can do now is back in mesh terrain inside um, uh, generate the terrain um, oh no is in generate block we can delete the commented out because I was a coward. I can delete this. There we go. Um, so go back to generate terrain. In fact, we need snow. <gasps> we do need snow. So after we've asked whether to do a, a, a block, we can say if y, remember that's the height of the actual terrain. If that's greater than 2, that seems to be where I put snow. Let's just put minus 2. Then B type equals snow, stone, <laughs> snow. And then um, if y is exactly 0, then B type set to ice. I think I've got ice. That will look very snowy. Um, okay, just for the Christmas special. Um, also, oh, that reminds me, we can turn on snow. I did try this the other, I haven't tried it for like months, but I turned on snow the other day and it didn't look great. It wasn't working very well. Oh, how do I turn on the snow? How do I turn on snow? <laughs> Is it right here? Oh, snowfall, there we go. Hopefully I just uncomment that line in main and we've got snowfall. Um, right, the, the, the trees. Okay, prepare code, prepare code. In fact, let's just take a breath. I'll just slow down. I'll give myself like six minutes. Okay. Um, plant tree. Here I am. So, wiggle. This disrupts the grid. This is a new thing. I've given myself, my present self, from my past self, to my future self, three stars to tell me that this is here. So, I've got a new variable called wiggle. And I'm just saying that equals the flawed value. That just means a whole number. Um, I get rounds down. So if it's 4.3, it'll round it down to 4. If it's 4.7, still rounds it down to 4. To um, the sine function of the z and the x position. So our grid position of that of that tree times by 3. So this is like the frequency of your of your sine wave or your wiggle. The higher that number, the more wiggly the tree alignment will be. So you can play with that number and to have different shapes of woods and things. And then I think we must add that wiggle to um, oh, the purling noise of, of our tree. Because that purling noise for whether we're going to get a tree or not determine, or sorry, determines where the tree will be planted, 
So we don't want to add the wiggle after it's been planted, else we might wiggle it off the side of a cliff and we'll just have a floating tree. So we want to add that wiggle as we're, or before we choose a place to plant the tree. So we add the wiggle in there. Okay, do we add the wiggle anywhere else? Uh, the tree height it looks like I'm, I'm taking as um, type multiplying by seven. Um, oh, I'm, gonna, I'm adding wiggle to all of these that looks like I should be able to change. I can I can just say x and z equal x and z plus wiggle surely, and then I'm done. Okay, 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 okay. Right. Can I remember that? Let's just go and copy wiggle. And I'll copy the comment as well. Um, then I want to go to my our code, and we're in the mesh terrain. And we want to go and find, which will be at the top, close to the top, plant tree. Here we go, around line 48. There's our Trunky Wonky. So, before Trunky Wonky, we want to disrupt the grid. Our wiggle wants to equal floor, sign of Z and X. There we go. And then, I think what would be good is to... Oh, where are we getting, where's our, Perlin noise? It looks like we don't use pearly noise. Right, so the same thing that we, okay. Oh, this explains a mystery, which I haven't explained at all. When we're planting a tree, let's just, sorry, when we're planting a stone, um, where are we, plant stone, we're using tree noise and tree frequency, which I never commented on. I just used that, which may, may have been confusing. It's because in my prepare code, I used Perlin noise for trees, which I thought I had already done, but I clearly haven't. So then I just borrowed that Perlin noise to distribute our stone using Perlin noise. Um, anyway, right, so we need to distribute our, <laughs> we need to go and um, use this, Perlin get height. Um, that's weird. So I don't get the height. Oh yeah, generate tree there. I need to go and have a look at, okay, generate tree. Tree system generate tree. Oh, that's in, I'm running out of time. Let's, let's add, um, to for next time, where am I? In my main module. Here's my notes. Oh yeah, what video are we on anyway? We are on 24. <laughs> so welcome to the end of video 24, tutorial 24. Um, audio pickups are men probably haven't done that. Rocks, yes, done. Well done. Tree placement wiggle, yes. Well, doing, doing. Um, prevent tree crown clap. I'm not sure about that. I don't know. Um, but we also need tree. We need to say um, tree Perlin noise. Yeah. Okay. And right. So, so that's in my prepare code, right? I'll put that in. You know what? I'll just copy that into my official code, which you can get <laughs> in the link in the description. Good. Okay. Just in case I 
copy over things later on. Right, um, we need to go and run this because we've added the tree wiggle. So I was in the I was getting uh, distracted by other things. So I haven't actually added this wiggle yet. So um, and we want the trees bigger. I think this was times seven, and we want to say um, z. Uh, plus equals wiggle, and do I just? I'm sure I could, I could just do this equals no 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 equals wiggle, and then also um, x equals wiggle, and then hopefully that won't mess up the Perlin noisy thing too much <laughs> as it exists. I don't think it uses it. I don't. I don't know how it's going to affect things. Let's just run. Hopefully, everything's going to look icy and snowy, and um, it's snowing. I've made it snow. Okay, it's not looking too icy. <laughs> oh, we have got some snow up there. Okay, there's more snow than there usually was. Uh, there usually is. Uh, yeah, we've got floating trees, but we have got taller trees, and our trees are not so much in a grid. Look, it's like we're in a wood with gruffalos and it's snowing. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Again, if you're watching this, thank you so much for uh, believing in the community and uh, <laughs> knowing that a, a video would appear at some point. Um, apologies, I usually like to get this in before Christmas, but hopefully a silver lining, a silver lining, a frozen frosty silver lining is that um, Christmas is over, but maybe this brings back a little bit more of the Christmas feeling um, until January the 6th. So there we go. Thank you very much for watching. See you in the next video, and goodbye from Panda. Goodbye.